Hey guys, it's 7628 here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, match grade rounds for your semi-auto. Um, we're going to be making 223 rounds, but you can apply the same principles to your semi-auto 308, um, semi-auto 300, uh, 300 blackout, uh, 6.5 Grendel, you know, 6.5 Creedmoor, whatever you're shooting, it's going to be the same principles, but different components. Um, we're going to show you how to, how to make it from um, your spent cases all the way up into the finished product, which are these, you know, these gorgeous match grade rounds that we're shooting out of semi-auto. Cool, so first thing you want to do is you want to get your clean brass. And you're going to want to um, lube it up somehow. All right, so once you got your brass laid out, you need to lube it up. And then you need to um, roll them all halfway, halfway over. So it can get the other side. You need to make sure all your cases are lubed well or else or else you can get stuck in your dies, and that's a huge pain in the ass. All right, so we're gonna let those dry about, I think about five minutes. Okay, for this next part, you're gonna need um, a couple Factory, load, factory loaded rounds. Um, you're gonna need some calipers and you're gonna need um, a bullet comparator. Something like the Hornady bullet comparator. I'm sorry, this is a case comparator, not bullet comparator. So we're gonna switch this out for the 223. I have a mark so you can easily switch between them. You're also going to need um, a pencil or pen, something to write on. All right, so we got our calipers. We're going to stick these in here. Tightness, and we're going to zero it. All right, so I like to load um, ammunition for semi-autos to factory ammunition specs. So this is some uh, Lake City green tip stuff I have lying around. So I'm just gonna measure this because I know it, it'll be the spec. So I like to do five, take um, an average of five rounds measured. So let's see, first one is 1.459. So let's get the average for these guys. So next we're gonna resize and deep prime those rounds. But first we gotta set up our dies. We gotta take these out because this is setting up, this is set up for loading 243. And you're gonna need a set of dies. If you're loading semi-auto, you're gonna want um, some small base dies. What small base dies do are they resize the round um, all the way, I guess you could say to the base 
all the way to the base of the um, cartridge. I'll show you. Other bullets don't, I mean, other um, dies don't size it all the way. Let me see if I can find some. I got some 308 laying around. I don't know if you can see, these are in um, RCB, not RCBS, um, rating type S dies. Uh, and they don't, they don't um, size it all the way down. You can see a little marker there. And if you feel it, you can run your fingernail over it. You feel like a little bump. And that's just because it doesn't, it doesn't, the dies don't go all the way to the base. These ones do. You want, you want uh, reliability in a semi-auto. So you want, uh, you don't want that bulge there or anything that will make it get stuck um, in the chamber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to size one of these cases real quick and then we're going to check um, the bullet comparator to see if that, uh, if it's um, at 1.457 inches. I got 1.458. Hey, that's close enough for me. Take it. Do another one. Do a couple to make sure. One point four five six. Five, five. Two more. Let's see, one point four five seven. That one's at one point four five seven. Sweet. So we're exactly where we need to be. When you're when you're adjusting your dies, um, what you're gonna do is, is you resize one, boom, measure it. Say it's over and or under, then um, you you're gonna tweak your die uh, by turning it down or turn uh, turning it uh, backing it out, um, and then don't resize that case again. Do another case, another case. Boom, do that one. Measure it. If it needs to adjust, like I said, do it again, but just don't resize that case. Once you get, um, once you find out that you're hitting that measurement that, that we did, uh, predetermined, um, then you can go back and resize all those other cases. So that's just some advice. Now, this is going to take a while, so I'll put you on fast forward. Okay, now that we've resized the cases, it's time to check the case length. Um, when you're resizing the case, you're squeezing the brass back down to the uh, size you want it. So um, there's no when it's in that die, there's nowhere for the brass to go. So it goes, it tends to go towards the um, towards the neck, and the neck actually gets longer and grows. So we find the case length by uh, checking the Sammy specs for it. So the max case length is going to be. 1.760 uh, inches and it, and the actual this right here is going to be the minimum case neck uh, case length so it's going to be you subtract uh, 30 thousandths from that and it's going to be 1.730 so that means that the case length has to be between 1.73 and 1.76 Make sure that calipers are zero. Yeah, they're good. So 1.766. That's six thousandths over. Let's try a couple. I like to try a couple of them. Just to sort of a general idea of where where the sizes are. Point. See that one's below case. That's so that's within range. 
that's way over. 13,000's over. Wow. 20,000's over. So pretty much looks like we have to resize all these. 17,000's over. Alright guys, um, so now we're going to trim some cases up. Um, there is so many different tools out there. Uh, you know, they have the ones where you can, there's like a little lathe that you chuck it up, that you kind of chuck the case up to. Um, I like to just keep it simple and, and eliminate like as much, um, I don't want to call it fiddling around, but you know, adjusting and stuff. So um, I, for, for years, probably for, I don't know, six or seven years, I was using, using the um, lead case trimmer. And uh, basically you, you chuck this up to the drill well, let me show you what it is first before I check it out. You, um, what you're gonna do is uh, you have the different case, case holders, screw it in, give it a quick screw, boom, and then you have um, the cutter with a pilot. And it's gonna have, there's a different pilot for, uh, diff for each caliber. So that goes in, this little, um, goes, this little rod goes through the flash hole and contacts the base of the, uh, I guess, say the case holder, and it turns, um, you check it up to the drill, turn the drill on, it turns the case, you hold this part, and it just trims it down real quick to a fixed length. It's really, it's pretty fast, um, it's really easy to use, but you can't adjust it, uh, which is fine by me. Let me show you how it works real quick. I just chucked an old drill up, an old corded drill, up to, uh, you know, a vise. And then see, so check it out. The yeah, case, I think that case was, uh, well, let's see, trimmed it a little bit, you can see. Let's check the case size on it, the case length. So we got it at 1.753, that's fine. We're actually 8,000, or let's see, 1.752, so we're 8,000 below the max. Let's do, let's do a couple more so I can show you how easy this is. The only thing is, the only thing I hate about this is that you have to unscrew this every time. Then you put the case in, and you have to screw it back down. See, I'm that case. Oops. You gotta make sure it's centered too. And then put the case, uh, put the cutter in. Oops. See, it came loose, damn it. Let's see if I can get a long one. If I can show you. Sorry. There we go. See what the case length is. So 1.755, 1.753. So we can get a little closer to this. So I can show you. These are so right now. So right now we're just trimming them. We're not worrying about um, they're burning them or chamfering the inside. You see how it leaves that metal? Oops, sorry. See how it leaves the metal? We're gonna do that later. I like to do everything in batches. See, and you can see it's it works fine. I never have any problems with it. It's just slow. Your hands, they don't get tired, but they start to get all, I don't know. It's, it's, you're not dinged up. Let's check the lanes on that. So, and it gives you pretty consistent, consistent sizes. Oops, sorry. All right, um, so recently I started, I just bought Called the uh, world's finest finest trimmer. What it does, it, it um, actually you have a pilot for every uh, different caliber. The good thing is you can use it for groups of calibers. So if you have like 243 and 308 and 260, you can basically use a 308 pilot for all of them. So it's kind of cool. So it's the pilot right there, and it's got the cutter housing, and then it's got the um, the cut. It's like a, the cutter on the inside. Sorry. Let's get some more light on. 
So, and you chuck it up to the drill. Let's do a bunch of these. I just keep pushing until I don't feel or hear any grinding anymore. You can see that, that one was real short. Let me see if it's holding. Yeah, holding fine, man. This is awesome. This is actually speeding up this a lot. So, I trimmed up 180 something cases in 15 minutes with that, uh, with that world's finest trimmer. It's actually world's finest trimmer too. Uh, it was awesome. That's the fastest I've ever, that's the fastest I've ever um, trimmed cases before. Like I used to use a Lee one and like I said, it works fine. It's, um, but it's just real slow. So, that's saying it's kind of time. So now what we gotta do is we have to, um, we have to chamfer and deburr the cases. So that one should, I have a tool for that too. They have hand tools you can use, but it's gonna take a long time and it's gonna, um, it's gonna wreak havoc on your hands. I got this thing a little while back. It's a lineman, um, like a case prep center. So it's got, it's got a bunch of um, a bunch of attachments for it. You can do it has like five um, five attachments that can run at once. I don't usually use all five of them at once. I only use maybe like two of them. It doesn't take long. You don't need to hold it on there and grind it because then you're going to lose more um, length. So just quick one like that. Boom, boom. Let's see, just enough to just enough to trim it. Not trim it to uh, do burr and chamfer. There we go. You can see it better. We're done chamfering these and deburring them. Now, before we can prime them prime the cases, you gotta get all that, um, the residue from the, from the lube off it. Cause you don't want that in your chamber, gumming your chamber up. You want, you want to keep your gun as clean as possible. Remember we're going for, we want reliability as much as we want accuracy out of a semi-auto. So we don't want to get it any more dirty than it's going to get. So I'm going to run these, going to run these through the tumbler for about half hour and then we'll be back to prime these. Okay, so now we have our fully processed brass. So we have our brass that we resize, um, we trim, and then we uh, chain for it and deburred. So now we get to assembling the components. Uh, the first step you're gonna need to do is you're gonna have to uh, prime your cases somehow. Now there's, so, there's a bunch of different one, um, ways to prime cases. Um, you know, they have some that are off the press. This is the one that came with the kit, the Lee 50th anniversary kit, and it works fine for me, so I just keep has no problem for me, so I just keep using the same kit. Now, you saw I just kind of dumped them, uh, dumped all the, the primers in the, this is primer tray. So, you just kind of got to agitate a little bit, and they're all going to flip over to the right side. You want the bottoms, I guess the inside of the primer facing out. Let me make sure they're all, there are a couple went in there. There you go. Cool. Let's see if 
can get a better angle, I'll show you how this works. So, this is a Lee one. This is, I know everyone has her, has a different one. This is how the Lee one works. So, get the case in, put the case in. Uh, put the ramp all the way, and then you're gonna hit this. Oh crap, that's not supposed to happen. And then you lift the um, the handle up all the way, so, and it primes it. You can kind of feel it, you'll be able to feel it. See? So now we have our prime brass. Uh, what we're going to do next is arrange it in a loading block. Uh, something I wanted to mention about when you're priming, I forgot to mention it, is uh, when you're priming it, when you're priming the cases, it should be really easy and smooth for the primer to, to go into the um, to go into the primer pocket. If you never want to have to force it in, even if it is a little stiff. It should go in still like smoothly, like stiffly smooth. If that makes sense. If you have to force it in, then you might have like a, um, you might have crimp primers, which is a pain in the butt. A lot of uh, all Lake City brass, if it's a, uh, if it's not processed, will have that primer, uh, primer crimp, and it is a pain in the butt to get um, to remove. Here's like I use like trimmers that will cut off. So I suppose we like trim the um, primer for you. No, I'm sorry, the primer pocket. Crimper, crimp, the primer pocket crimp, the primer crimp. Say that. Um, but it just doesn't work very well. It's still hard to get in. I think there was an RB, RBCS, RCB, RCBS makes one. Um, it's like it mounts to the, to your, um, press and it, I think it just stretches it out but I haven't, I haven't bought that yet. I have a bunch of Lake City but it's just another step in the loading that I don't want to do. I, I, I'm i putting everything in a block and I'm checking to make sure that uh, every case I put in there is prime. Sometimes when you get in like that zone where you're just working and you, you know you're just uh, plowing through you know get every case primed or doing whatever so you want to make and you might skip one by accident or something might happen like the primer might fall out and you didn't really see it because you're zoned out so uh, I always check it because... and we're going to need a way to measure measure those charge charges like, there's a couple ways you can do it because um, the way I started out I started using the one um, that came with the kit it was like a thrower like a, I think RCBS makes one too probably all the companies will make some kind of like a thrower where it's a cylinder the powder is in there and it's got um you kind of just pull the lever down and it has like a, uh, a cylinder that you can adjust for the to the amount of powder you want per throw and then what you do is just measure it you know you would measure it out and then make adjustments measure adjustment until it's this it's consistently dispensing like the same amount of powder and then, we, then you would just throw it right you know throw it here's like Throw it, charge it, throw it, charge it, throw it, charge it, throw it, charge it, throw it, charge it. It's really quick. It's not crazy accurate. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not, I would say it's, it's within like two to three tenths of a grain, so it's not too bad. But, um, there's another way you can do it where you would throw just under where you want to, what you're, what you want to be. So if you want it 24 grains, you would throw it to like 23 point, Two or 23 point, I'm sorry, 22 point, wait, look at that, 23.6, like 23.6, we'll say that, 23.6, and then you would have like a little trickler, and then you would, you, you don't have to use, you know, one of these beams, because it's, it's super slow, it works, it's very accurate, but it's super slow, and then you would just trickle up those last couple uh, tenths of a grain, thing. but like I said, that's super slow, um, It'd be good. I would, you would do that if you didn't have an automatic charger, but you want it still to be real accurate.
but um, I have an automatic power charger, so I'm gonna use that. And let me tell you, it, it can, this uh, charge master costs about, say about 250, about 250 bucks, and it is worth every penny. It's so fast and very accurate. Every time, no matter what you're using, you need to zero your um, zero calibrate and zero the scale. So you can see the numbers are changing back and forth. Uh, that's because I the scale's real sensitive when I have a fan on here, ceiling fan. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Let's see. Make sure this little guy's closed right here because sometimes you leave it open when you're changing out powders, and I had this happening before. Oh, leave it open, put the new powder in, and it comes right out. Pain in the ass. So I'm using uh, Hodgson 4835. It's not part of the extreme line, but it's been real accurate for me. And um, what I like about it is it, you can get some pretty decent velocities out of it. I was trying to top out the velocity with the case capacity. And, I, and then someone suggested this to me, and it worked really well. Uh, Vargit works excellent. Vargit's excellent for, for um, 223. Only thing is, Vargit's pretty slow. It'll be accurate, but slow. I'm putting these together. These are the same lot. So even if I have to put it back in one of these cases, um, one of these little jars, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same lot. I'm not really mixing them. I'm probably gonna... All right, one of these will get you about 200, I think 70, 270 rounds, depending on your powder charge. Put that in there. Blah, blah, blah. All right, now we're gonna zero, uh, we're gonna calibrate this guy. So hit calibrate, calibrate. First you're calibrating it with nothing on it. All right. Right now we're gonna add a 50 gram weight on it, like it says. Boom. Yeah. Oh, 200, so it's two. Calibrate. All right, ready to go. Already, um, okay, so now we're gonna zero this guy. Trying to get my first. Let's see, is that in there? Put the camera back. Once you got your scale set up, you really don't wanna move it around. You say whenever you move it, you should uh, actually recalibrate it again. There's one thing I want to touch on with you. Um, if you're looking for lo reloading um, data, you can go to the Hodzon website, um, and they have actually a, a lot of data on there. Um, also, I, I would buy these little books. Uh, there was this reloading place by my house where I used to live, and um, they, whenever I bought a new caliber, I would just go in there and buy one of these too. It was like, it was like maybe like six bucks. And then it's it, it takes, um, Tells you it has like reloading data from a bunch of different book, a bunch of different companies. You got Nos, uh, Hornady, Nosler, Sierra, and this cool thing about the Sierra one, it has it for bolt action and for ARs. This is bolt action. Um, where is it? Back here, AR15. So, so I was using, uh, let's see, I'm using 75 grain. Uh, Hornies. Here's here's forty eight thirty forty eight ninety five. Thank you. It says the highest load you should use is forty three sixty. But I I kind of found like some books or some reloading manufacturers like uh, bullet manufacturers and powder manufacturers will give you different will give you different um, different 
max capacity. So you can, I usually just go off the highest one and then do my load development. All right, so let's see, I, do, I know for my load for this guy is uh, 23.5. Enter the space. So if we look up here, Sorry. If we look up here, we can see um, overall length, max overall length should be 2.26 max. And the minimum should be 2.125. So the longest is going to be 2.26. So we can't be go over that. Two point two five seven, and the limit, the max is two point two six. So I'm just gonna do a bunch of these. You, if you listen, there's like a little crunch, and this is from the from the powder being compressed, slightly compressed. Ooh, nice. So these are gonna be accurate. Hey guys, so thanks for watching the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll include it in the videos. But remember, this is how to make a match round for your semi-auto. So if you want to learn about um, making match rounds for, say, your bolt action, which will be a little more different and actually be a little more precise, I'm going to do another video about that. It's going to be a longer, it's going to be a little more in-depth. But um, this is just a quick and dirty for brakes for semi-autos. Like you can fire these in a bolt action, no problem. Stay tuned. Um, we're going to be taking these out to the range in my next video. Hopefully, I can get out there soon. And we're going to test the velocity, do velocity tests on these. And we're also going to shoot these out to 600 yards. And then, depending on the weather that day, if it's uh, if the, if it's pretty hot here in Vegas right now, so. If I don't get out there early enough, we're going to see a lot of mirage and it'll be kind of hard to spot these little rounds at say like 800 yards. I want to shoot them at 800 yards, I think they're capable of it, but with the wind and the uh, mirage, it might be like almost impossible to spot. I'll need a really good spotter with me and um, the wind will have to be cooperative. So like I said, stay tuned and thanks for watching.